Hey there, we are back for our third module or installment, whatever we want to call this, in our cleanse system. So this is E for exhale. This is a fun one. They're all fun, actually. So just as we know, stretching, we, when we talk about stretching our body, it is a good thing for us. And one of the things it does is it actually helps increase our lung capacity. And that expands our life because we have found that lung capacity is actually one of the greatest indicators of lifespan, that it's not actually your genetics, your diet, or your exercise. They all contribute, some more significantly than others, but really it comes down to your lung capacity, which is pretty incredible because we can do some things about that. You can't always control some of those other things quite as much. And this stuff dates back to like 500 BC. So this is the like old stuff. So we talked a little bit about this before. So how are we going to do this? So we've, we've always thought that there was nothing that we could do to stop the aging process, that whatever measure of health you want to talk about, we we're always told we were going to lose function. So we're going to lose cognitive function. We're going to lose bone mass. We're going to lose lean muscle mass, etc. All those things as we age. And it's actually not normal for that to happen. So our lungs shrink about 12% when we are between 30 to 50 years old, and then even faster as we get older from there. So because of that, we're forced to breathe faster and harder, which increases our blood pressure, increases disorders with our heme, which is a component of our blood, and it can cause issues with anxiety as well. And this doesn't need to be this one-way path to decline that everybody seems to think that we should be on. Anyway, it's here, knows this probably is not true, but really our organs, our cells, they're malleable all the time. We're, this, is, you know, this is new to most people that we can actually change things. We're not you know, born with a set of whatever, and that's what we're have for the rest of our life. And let's talk about free divers, because these guys are a great example. So free divers have been able to increase their lung capacity by 30 to 40%. That's 14 liters, so it's like double what's normal for the average male. So any regular practice that stretches the lungs and keeps them flexible works. You don't have to be a free diver, which is great because, you know, who wants to necessarily go to that extreme? You want to do that, have at it. But all it really takes is moderate exercise. So things like walking, cycling, that has to be moderate. So it needs to can't be a slow saunter. It needs to have some some oomph to it. But you can increase your lung size by up to 15% by doing that. Pretty fantastic stuff. So the best way to increase our lung capacity, so the stretching is great, kind of help that overall health and longevity, but another way when you want to specifically work on increasing our lung capacity is again focusing on that exhale. So a little bit about what we were talking before um, with extending those exhales and starting to breathe less. So this isn't as much about the volume, this is more just about time and this is what it's this is what where this one is a little bit different so we're going to start talking about what we call the thoracic pump and the diaphragm in here so this is more about diaphragmatic breathing you may have heard of like this so the thoracic pump is a system within our body so our normal blood will do a full circulation of your arteries and veins once every minute it's pretty fast so that's 2,000 gallons or 7,570 liters of blood moving around through those arteries and veins every day. Now the speed and the strength of your circulation is determined by this thoracic pump. And this is what the pressure that builds inside your chest when we breathe. So this is how it works. So when you inhale, so your lungs expand, you create negative pressure within your chest cavity, and then that allows blood to flow into your heart. When you exhale, your blood shoots out of your body and your lungs, and then it recirculates through wherever it's supposed to go. And it's your diaphragm that powers this pump. 
So your diaphragm sits, it's a big muscle that sits just underneath your lungs, spreads across your entire chest cavity, and it moves up and down like this. And like I said, that's what powers this pump. So when it lifts, as you breathe out, your lungs are shrinking. And then as you take a breath in, so those lungs back up, you draw that diaphragm back in. So it's, it's kind of worked like a bell. So when it's up, like this, when your lungs are exhaling, getting smaller, and then it pulls down and flattens when you take a breath in. And that up and down motion can happen about 50,000 times a day. And then most of us engage a very, very small percentage of our diaphragm. So over time, that really puts a lot of stress on your heart, elevates your blood pressure, and can cause all kinds of other circulatory issues. So when you start extending those breaths, extending those exhales, you can um, in in increase the capacity of your diaphragm to work. So you start using more of your diaphragm because you give it more time to do what it needs to do. You know, it allows it to come up higher, if that makes sense, okay? And then what that's gonna do is just re reduce the load on your heart, which just allows your body to work more efficiently. So you'll sometimes hear about this, that the diaphragm might is sometimes called the second heart. So you're able to really work on this internal muscle. And this is some of these, the, these myths before that we can change these things and we really can. So shallow breathing over the long term, so not moving that diaphragm very much, using a very small percentage of it. What you'll start to see is um, shoulders start to raise that starts to try to lift as well and the neck can sometimes extend you get this weird posture and um that's it on this one there's really not that much to it so it's again about practicing to exhale and then what you can do now you're not gonna be able to see this but you want to think about moving your diaphragm your chest cavity in all directions so it's not just about the up and down or when you, especially if you're laying down you know the up and down of your belly you want to move it in all directions so think about even expanding your rib cage is how I think about it so you can even put your hands on the bottom of your rib cage you want to push them out side to side as well as front to back use up your space take up some room in the world don't be small take up your big breathing space and that is exhale. Pretty short one, not too uncomfortable on this one, especially as you get used to having those longer exhales. So we're almost there, we've got two left to do. We're going on to nose, this is a fun one too. I'm gonna say that I think on all of them, but nose has got some fun things going on inside there. So I will see you over there.